welcome back to another episode of Music Notes. Today we're going to be discussing the best loved children's song of all time. Here it is. <laughs> is probably the first hymn that you learned as a child. It is Jesus Loves Me. So today our hymn is just um, the most renowned children's hymn that is out there. And the words were written by Anna Bartlett Warner and she was born in 1827. And Anna can trace her lineage back to the Puritan pilgrims on both sides of her family. And her father was Henry Warner, and he was a well-known New York City lawyer, and he was originally from New England. And her mother, Anna Bartlett, came from a wealthy, fashionable family in New York's Hudson Square. And she also had an older sister who was about 11 years older than her. Her name was Susan. Anna, as I mentioned, she was born in 1827. And both sisters were devout Christians and became Christians in the 1830s. And they were confirmed members of the Mercer Street Presbyterian Church. So they grew up Presbyterian, but then in later life, Anna um, was said to uh, mingle in Methodist circles. Like many of the composers and writers that we've discussed, uh, this family uh, knew its fair share of hardship and tragedy. And the first tragedy was the death of their mother. Uh, Susan and Anna lost their mother when Anna was particularly young. And Henry's sister, Fanny, came to live with them. So their aunt then came to live and raise the girls. So that was the first tragedy. And then the second tragedy, which was um, a tragedy for many, many Americans at the time, was the Panic of 1837. And Henry, the father, he was a successful lawyer. He lost his fortune in the Panic of 1837, as well as in sub subsequent um, lawsuits and poor investments that he made during that time. And so as a result, the family, the two sisters, their aunt and their father, had to leave their mansion in St. Mark's Place in New York and move to a rundown um, Revolutionary War era farmhouse on Constitution Island, which was right across from West Point, New York. So that actually turns out to be a huge blessing for Americans. But at the time, it was very hard for the two sisters. And by 1849, Anna was 22. And in order to help the family's financial situation, both daughters set out to start writing as a means of earning money and to help the family. Susan, the older sister wrote under the pen name Elizabeth Wertherell, and she wrote over 30 novels, but her first novel, which was titled The Wide, Wide World, and that was written in 1850, was the most popular. And at the time, it was translated to several languages. It was translated to French, German, and Dutch, and it was, um, perhaps the most widely circulated story of the day just behind the famous Uncle Tom's Cabin by Harriet Beecher Stowe. It gives you sort of a, 
an idea of a place in history. So that was Susan's uh, famous novel in 1850. Anna, the writer of Jesus Loves Me, her younger sister, she also wrote under the pseudonym, a different pseudonym, Amy Lothrop, L-O-T-H-R-O-P, and she wrote 31 novels, including Robinson Crusoe's Farmyard, Dollars and Cents, in West Point Colors, and she also wrote a biography of her sister. The sisters published uh, over 106 novels and children's books, 18 of which they wrote together. The sisters were very close. And some of those that they wrote together, the titles are Witch Hazel, Mr. Rutherford's Children, and The Hills of the Shatamuk. Anna also published two collections of verse in Hymns of the Church Militant in 1858 and then Wayfaring Hymns in 1869. So neither sister married uh, and for 40 years they conducted regular Bible studies for the cadets at West Point. So they were right across the way from West Point and their uncle was Reverend Thomas Warner, and he was the academy chaplain. And so the two sisters would regularly go over to West Point and um, work with the cadets and have Bible studies. And Anna wrote a new hymn for her Sunday school class each month. So she was constantly writing. And it's believed that Dwight D. Eisenhower was one of the last cadets to attend their classes, and he graduated actually in the year of Anna's death. She died in January of 1915, and Eisenhower graduated from West Point in June of 1915. So the words to Jesus Loves Me first appeared as a poem in Susan's best-selling novel, Say, and seal, S-E-A-L. And that poem, in one chapter, a child lay dying and nothing could be done to alleviate his pain or give him a second chance at life. He knew he was dying and as his fate grew near, the novel's main character, a Sunday school teacher, Mr. Linden, attempts to comfort the small boy. And looking into the child's eyes, he slowly recites the poem. And this is how it goes. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak, but he is strong. Jesus loves me, loves me still, though I'm very weak and ill. From his shining throne on high comes to watch me where I lie. Jesus loves me. He will stay close beside me all the way. Then his little child will take up to heaven for his dear sake. So those are the very first words of the beautiful hymn, we love to sing and teach our children, Jesus loves me. And these verses can be found in the novel, Say and Seal on pages 115 and 116. And when they were written, they were only meant to calm the soul of a dying fictional character. But these simple lines, they moved hundreds of readers to tears, and it became the most beloved poem of its time. And, you know, nobody can calculate how many times it was read or said or repeated on the battlefield, uh, in the homes of children whose fathers were packing up and going off to war, the Civil War, uh, from the pulpits, from pastors on Sunday morning to the Sunday school classes, or even when it was said in the White House. So at that time, 
this poem gained great momentum just from being in that book, just the nature of it, the hauntingness of it, but also the beautiful light of Jesus there in the midst of such sadness here on earth. Um, it talks about salvation for this little child. And, you know, these 16 verses that were written in the book, they touch the hearts of millions. And one of the many whom was touched was none other than William Bradbury. So I know his name sounds familiar. We have learned over the last four months that he wrote the melodies that we love so much to uh, Just As I Am, to Sweet Hour of Prayer, Savior Like a Shepherd Lead Me, and My Hope is Built on Nothing Less, and now we've got Jesus Loves Me. So he, as we recall from some past episodes where we delved into his background, he was a teacher of voice and organ, and in 1854, Bradbury formed a piano company with his friends Ferdinand Light and Henry Newton. And besides heading up his business, he also continued um, the practice of setting his faith to music. Um, and he was busy composing his own songs and uh, found out this time when looking in on him that he also um, was a huge uh, encouragement to Fanny Crosby, whom we just learned was the author of Blessed Assurance. Uh, he encouraged her to devote her talents to writing songs, and he even took down uh, via dictation the first of her hymns. If you recall, Fanny was blind, and uh, she ultimately wrote over 9,000 hymns. So uh, Bradbury knew Fanny. Um, but in the beginning of the Civil War, Bradbury, um, in that time, he had built up his music company to publish and distribute his works. But it was during this time, it was 1862, um, his music business was taking off, and it was at this moment that he, I guess, read, say, and seal, and he fell in love with the poem, Jesus Loves Me, as did many others. And although... At that time, he was an accomplished composer of what would be considered highbrow or high church music in the hymns that I just mentioned. Um, he was moved so much by these words that were being said to a little child. He was moved in a, a different way and he felt compelled to add a simple melody to Anna Warner's poem. And Bradbury was a lover of children's voices and a strong believer in music education, both in school and in church. And he was so inspired by Anna's poem that he created a melody for Jesus Loves Me, and then he felt to fully uh, make it into a full song, he had the melody for the verses that she wrote, and then it was Bradbury himself that added the chorus. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. So that was Bradbury that put that chorus in there to complete the song. So the, the marriage, the union of Anna's words with Bradbury's music turned out to be just one of the most um, beautiful gospel collaborations of the time. But, you know, had Jesus Loves Me, that poem being in that book that, I don't know, have you heard of the book, Say and Seal? Maybe some of you have. If that poem had stayed tucked in that book, or if Bradbury hadn't read it and been inspired, or if Bradbury hadn't had his own publishing company, it would have been forgotten. And nobody today would have ever known it. Um, but through Bradbury's publishing network, uh, distribution network, the new children's song quickly worked its way across the 
north and the south. Remember at this time the Civil War was going on. And so in the face of just horrible fighting um, in this nation that had never seen um, such a divide, the Civil War, both sides um, just at each other's throats, um, this song, you know, both sides were singing it and they were singing about a savior who died yet had risen and still watched over everyone with equal love and equal compassion. Uh, so there's just such beauty in that and the unity that it created despite the huge divide that was going on in this country. So, um, boy, maybe we need some beautiful inspirational poem to be set to music today to create um, unity in our nation today. Anyway, the popularity of this song was so great that both the sisters, Anna who wrote it and Susan whose novel it was published in first, uh, were buried with military honors because of their contribution made to the spiritual well-being of the soldiers as they came through West Point. And they are the only civilians buried in the West Point Cemetery. Also their home, which has the name Good Crag, was willed to the West Point Academy and it is now a museum in their honor. And as we well know, Jesus Loves Me is often the very first hymn that is taught to new converts and children worldwide. If you open up your hymnal, um, you can read the words. They've been changed a little bit from that original poem. And then over the course of the many years, um, additional verses have been added. I believe in our hymnal, we only have two verses in there, um, but you can look it up and find four, and in some instances, I came across six different verses. Uh, one final story to share regarding the hymn, Jesus Loves Me. In 1944, writer John Hershey wrote an article for the New Yorker magazine titled Survivor, and it is based on interviews with Lieutenant John F. Kennedy, and it tells the harrowing story of the PT-109 crew's survival in the South Pacific. It tells the story of in 1943 in the Solomon Islands, uh, John F. Kennedy's PT-109 was rammed and sunk. And with the help of natives, the PT made its way to Bird Island. A skiff went in and picked up the men. Islanders, um, Buku Gasa and Aroni Kamana, who found Kennedy and the survivors, remember that when they rowed on the PT boats to retrieve the survivors, in the fresh breeze on the way home, the Marines sang, Jesus loves me, with the natives who had learned it from the Seventh Day Adventists missionaries. So that's an interesting story uh, to think of um, John F. Kennedy being saved and then singing with those that saved him as they're being brought to safety um, in 1943. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak, and he is strong. So what a fascinating story. Um, thank goodness for the beautiful poem, and also thank goodness for William Bradbury for picking it out of the book and setting it to music, uh, and that is why we have it today. So just a, a beautiful collaboration. I hope you enjoy the children that sing our song today. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.
Jesus loves me, he who died.